What I don't think people understand is that when you say, oh, I'm going to go to school to be a nail technician, they're, they think, oh my god, you're just going to paint nails all day. That's horrible. So you've had some you've had some horror stories. I wasn't had, expecting you to I've have had these some stories. Horror stories. Share a juicy one for us. Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Glam Gossip by LLBA Podcast. I'm your host, Pooja, from LLBA, and we are a Canadian lash and beauty supply company, and our goal is to help you thrive and flourish in the beauty industry. Today we're going to be discussing uh, nail topics today, so becoming a nail technician, and we've invited a lovely guest today uh, named Paige, so... Hi Paige, Hi. welcome. Thank so you. Paige is our uh, nail tech here at the Beauty Bar. So we're actually very familiar with her. And Paige, thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having me. And our topic today is my journey as a nail tech. So we'll jump right in. And uh, Paige, why don't you tell us a little bit about how you got started in the nail in, uh, industry? What made you decide to become a nail tech? So. During the pandemic, actually, I was home alone all the time, and I needed something to do, and I started painting my nails, and it was just with regular polish, but I hate regular polish because it smears and it doesn't dry fast enough for me (laughs) because I'm impatient, and my dad actually got me a UV lamp and then some gel colors, so I started doing it. Of course, it was this really gross deep green and this fire truck red and it was summer oh, keep that, in mind. that came with the, the lamp no he got oh, that okay. especially oh. for me <laughs> <laughs> but it was summer um so i got some other polishes as well for it and then i started getting like bundles and collections and i have this whole like wall in my room just full of um, nail polishes but anyway i started to um, experiment a bit more and change the shape of it, put um, like tips on my nails instead of just using my actual nails because I was growing them out, but then I broke them. And I would uh, do like little designs and especially for um, like Halloween and all like fun holidays, I started doing designs and I was like, okay, yeah, no, this could be really fun actually and, and I like it. Like, I really enjoy it, so I applied for school, um, and yeah. Nice, straight on. Nails are fun. I went through a whole nail phase where I also got a UV uh, lamp thing. They're not that great, but it's fun if you're, like, at home. Yeah. And and you get them on Amazon, it comes (laughs) with, like, a bunch of nail polishes. Those are so addictive. I think I have, like, a hundred. But, um, so how did you, tell us more about, like, how you got trained and certified to be a nail tech. So I went to um, International Beauty Institute, which the campus I went to was in Hamilton, but they do have um, Toronto and Mississauga as well campuses, which are a little bit bigger than Hamilton's. But um, so I applied in June of 2022. And then um, in July, they got back to me about my start dates and all that because we were starting in uh, September. So I got my theory. So I did that all online before I did my practical. So I started the practical in uh, September. I was going three, I was going two days a week for three hours for about three months. Not bad. That's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's different than like normal school. So you can get like fully certified good to go in three months. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. But I don't, what people, what I don't think people understand is that when you say, oh, I'm going to go to school to be a nail technician, they they think, oh my god, you're just going to paint nails all day. No. <laughs> I can learn the theory about everything. I know like all like the bones, the nerves, uh, the muscles in your hands. Yeah, there's must be a lot that goes into. It. I didn't know you had to learn about muscles and nerves. Muscles, and stuff. nerves, like from here to here, I really? know, and from your toes to your hips, I know. Oh wow! Yeah, that's so cool. Yeah, it, it was a lot, but 
it was worth it in the end and like having learn all like these different diseases and and um like disorders with like your hands and your feet so mm -hmm. that's true because if you don't know what you're doing mm -hmm. you can dangerous. like actually hurt somebody yeah. like if you cut them in the wrong place mm -hmm. or if they get like an infection yeah definitely. especially for their feet that's like very dangerous yeah and if somebody comes in and they have like uh, nail fungus which can also sometimes look like psoriasis there it's a weird thing just in the late um, phases of the fungus you might not know if it's safe to treat them or like uh, to continue on with the service or not it it's something that you have to know like all of like these like really busy little shops or salons like you hear these horror stories about um, people getting um, infections or all that with their hands and like their nails fall off it's kind of gross <laughs> oh wow yeah have you seen maybe this is off topic have you seen on Ripley's believe it or not that those people with like the <laughs> oh my god I can't <laughs> they just like popped into my head I don't know how they do that and they start to curl under yeah like, I think the person uh, who has the world record it like goes it's like a hula hoop it mm -hmm. goes like all the way around yeah and it's like half my height or something like have that have you seen the lady that has the toes the toes, the toes. <laughs> yeah yeah and she has to wear sandals mm -hmm. I guess forever how would you for put them on life. wait how <laughs> would you, I don't understand doesn't make any sense but hey, you're, she's in the Guinness Book of Records, so what do we know? Right? One trip and it's over, though. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's that's true, right? Because yeah. if you have really strong uh, nails mm -hmm. and it breaks, it can, like, actually hurt you. Oh, yeah. If it breaks so, in the wrong way, it can start growing back into your foot. Oh, my God. But, yeah. Yeah, I think there's a lot of the uh, a lot of like technical aspects that a lot of people don't understand. They probably assume it's like very. It is fun. It's, it's fun, fun. It's creative, artistic. But mm -hmm. then there's like a very practical yeah. uh, side to it as well. Mm -hmm. And um, Paige, you mentioned like um, you mentioned oh some people kind of turn up their nose at like nail tech sometimes mm -hmm. like is that like you think one of the challenges that you face what are some of the challenges you face as um as a nail tech you know being a young woman starting off mm -hmm. what are some of the challenges that you face or maybe you could talk more about the reactions that you get from people who may might not understand what, what it is that you do i've had some people tell me that um i didn't go to school after high school technically because it wasn't like a real university or college. I went to trade school. It's uh -huh. gonna be quick. Someone told you that? You did not go to school? Who mm -hmm. Oh my god. Yeah. Let's beat him up. <laughs> no, <Yeah. I'm> joking. <laughs> That's pretty mean, but I'm sure yeah. people in the beauty industry, they get comments like that all the time. Oh yeah, definitely. I can't even imagine like for other people who like have harder um careers that they want to get into. Mm -hmm. And any other like challenges you think you faced? Um, just Maybe with... like getting started, getting, I don't know, like funding or um, getting opportunities, networking, because I assume it was like a totally new world for you. Oh yeah. To kind of step into. And you're, um, you're not like actually from like a big town that maybe has a lot of salons. So is that like maybe an obstacle you thought you might face or how did you overcome that? Yeah, well, um, like I was saying with the salons that you hear all these horror stories from, that's, I have quite a few of those around my house, and uh, I didn't want to deal with anything with that whatsoever, just because if you're the nail tech and you're doing everything correctly and the company is telling you to do it a different way than what you've mm -hmm. been trained to do for it to be proper, like a proper service... It's not good for that. Um, you have to find, like, a reputable yeah. salon that actually hires, like, quality people and they have good products. And exactly. They maintain, I assume, like, hygiene must be so important. Oh, yeah. For, especially for, like, the feet. Yeah. As well. Especially for the feet. Like, there's so many germs on your feet and then you're dealing with skin and it's, it's just uh, not very sanitary for some places. Um, that's why I drive 45 minutes for work every day. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember you were telling me about how you, you love uh, the LLBA Beauty Bar mm -hmm. because uh, it's so much... Not to... <laughs> not to... 
<laughs> talk bad about the salons in your hometown, oh, no, which shall remain it. remain nameless. But yeah. you said it was like a lot nicer than some of the salons that you were kind of uh, used to, because as we said, it's we're like clean, we're reputable, we kind of follow all the you know guidelines and stuff like that. Yeah, like it. It's just like the environment around here, like the people that I work with. It's 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 so calm and nice and it's not anybody competing for anything or um like people going faster 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 let's fit as many people in as we can today Mm -hmm. like is that is that what you experienced before so um my question is actually what kind of what's your experience um with different kinds of uh setups environments like we you we uh, we mentioned that you work here at the beauty bar, mm-hmm. um, but then also you mentioned that uh, you had some other experiences with different kinds of setups, yes. like different salons, and you even did like a home based situation. Yeah. So why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Maybe explain to our viewers what are the options that are out there? Because I'm sure you can do mobile, you can do oh, at yeah. home, you can do a salon, you can have your own business. So why don't you um, tell us more about that? So uh, when I was actually uh, looking for a new nail tech job. I applied for what I thought was a salon, which turned out to be a mobile service where um, I go to people's homes, but I have to um, provide all of my equipment, like like the tables, the lamps, all of the polishes on these random strangers, and mm-hmm. I had to bring my own personal ones, all of my equipment, Oh wow! So what? and pay for gas to go to go there as well, and they take fifty percent. Oh my god, that was a scam, kind I of. I know, and I was like, "That's horrible." Yeah. What, it, what's the point of that? I don't know. It's <laughs> like why 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 would I pay you fifty percent if I could just go out and do that and start it by myself mm-hmm. at that point? But I think a lot of young women mm-hmm. who are just starting out, they probably don't know any better. Like as you yourself. Mm-hmm kind of fell for it, right? Because there are people who kind of take advantage. Yeah, uh, no. People who don't know better. They they didn't say that it was mobile. They said that it was going to be, like, in a actual building. Wouldn't have to go anywhere. Oh, wow. All the stuff would be provided. But as a young woman, it made me uncomfortable just even thinking about having to go to these people's homes. Like, but, like by myself. It's not like I'm working with a team or anything. It would be by myself and just be a little, um, little scary. That That's very sketchy. Yeah. So, yeah, definitely stay away from, like, situations like yeah, that. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend to do it. Mm-hmm. But have you ever point. done mobile before, like, independently, not um, working for someone else? So I thought about, like, having, like, a room in my house and then doing it from home. But it is very expensive, to start up with everything. Really? Oh yeah. Like um can't can't rely on Amazon <laughs> nail supplies. Oh, Amazon. That's where I buy them from. Well, you could but even like some of the simplest things. You need like the good quality exactly, stuff. Exactly, right? right? Especially if you're going to do it independently, you kind of have to like upcharge a bit mm-hmm. just because it's like you bought all of your equipment. It's not like you're from like a big company or something, right? The another place that I was looking at, I would have um, like six clients in my five-hour shift. Wow! How yeah. how is that possible? It wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> it just wasn't. Like I'd be like ten minutes late for my next one, and I'd get little talking to mm, for no. it. Yeah, <laughs> bad girl. Bad, and then. I but who, who, who scheduled it? Was the, the that owner. salon? Yeah. They were booking you. Oh, yeah. They just kept booking and booking and booking. And then I wouldn't get a lunch either, which oh, cannot wow. do. Oh, That's horrible. Yeah. Paige, you found a better place. <laughs> I did, and I am so happy, and I don't have to pay for parking here. True. <laughs> I have true. to do that at the other place. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was ridiculous, and they only did five hours, so if I had, like, a six-hour shift... I have to run out to my car and be like, oh, I need another hour. Yeah. Well, that's horrible. So you've had some you've had some horror stories. I I've wasn't had, expecting you to I've have had these some stories. horror stories, yeah. Really? Okay. Yeah. Maybe you can share one. Share a juicy one for us. Um so for the 
for another place, I um, was told the day before that I had to provide all of my equipment for, uh, like, all my tools, like, not, like, the LED lamps or anything, um, but, so I had to buy, set, like, quite a few, because if one's cleaning and I have another client, I need to be able to use something else, mm-hmm. right? So I went out and I bought 200, because it's not, it's not cheap to buy tools, especially, I went to Sally's, which, Sally's stuff isn't the greatest quality and spent two hundred dollars on um like cuticle clippers uh pushers oh, wow. like simple simple stuff maybe one set of brushes for designs which i didn't even end up using because i didn't have time to do any of that they gave you a list of like what you had to buy they just said like Bring stuff for manicures stuff? Okay. right um, and then, like, you have to, like, uh, put nail polish on it or something to mark that this is mine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so other people don't take it, which it's not a fun feeling at work when you're like, oh, my God, I'm in such a rush. I have to do this and that. And then going to go get your tools and they're not there anymore. So, um, so you were at, so that was, like, one horror story, mm-hmm. right? So... You've had your experiences with many different salons, and you mentioned mm-hmm. that the owner would often um, book the clients for you. Yeah. Is there any other way that, you know, as a, as a nail tech, whether you're independent or not, is there any other way you can kind of, like, build up your clientele? Maybe you can let us know any, like, tips or anything like that? So when I was starting out, I did um, press-on nails, so I'd design them, put them on uh, Instagram, say, message me for all the details about it, yada yada, give a quick description. And then I'd have some people message me back, except I wasn't doing, I was just doing local, so like I could drive and like drop it off at their house, maybe put in an extra 10 bucks for gas or something, because that's not cheap either. And uh, I'd have some issues with people going, oh, you're from Burlington. Uh, can't remember if it was like Oklahoma or something in the states or Pennsylvania. I was like, no, it says Burlington in my bio. So some people can be a little um, like ignorant if you're not if you don't have like a website or something like that. Mm-hmm. But I would recommend like social media. It is the biggest like way of promoting anything if you do want to do it independently or Facebook Marketplace. Just, okay. I've seen a lot of stuff on there with people saying they post their sets, saying like $30, $35 for a set. And I think that uh, the people would go there. I'm not too sure because I haven't done that myself, so I can't say for sure. Okay. Mm-hmm. And um, even if you work at a salon, um, is there anything else you can do to maybe like expand your clientele, mm-hmm. expand your client base? Like any any little like tips or tricks you can get kind of people to, you know, maybe come back or yeah. bring a friend. Like what do you what do you do? Well, if anything, <laughs> when I when I do have a client, I I treat them as a normal person. I try to connect with them in a way, not just. Uh, you know, some people, if you get your nails done sometimes, you're, they're kind of cold and you're like, mm-hmm. okay, this isn't relaxing. If you're talking and you're, you're having a conversation that you, you both enjoy, obviously if it's something that I can see that they're uncomfortable, uncomfortable about, I won't push it or anything. But honestly, I just try to be like their therapist. True. Yeah. True. If you're in the beauty industry, you have to be like a therapist. That's like mandatory. (laughs) It's like some of these stories that I've heard, it's it's, it's very interesting. And uh, I can vouch for that. Like our clients at the beauty bar, they love Paige because you're so (laughs) friendly and warm and you can really get people to talk to you. Even people who are like a little bit more quiet or Mm -hmm. reserved, they feel really comfortable opening up to you. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that kind of helps a lot. Because if people have a good experience with you, Mm -hmm. then they'll want to come back again. And they'll tell their friends, oh, hey, there's this cute nail place and Mm -hmm. they're really nice. So I think that also helps kind of 
build your clientele as well because yeah. I'm sure if, Cause pe- if cause people call the beauty bar yeah exactly yeah. they'll ask oh I want to see Paige mm-hmm. and you know they'll request to see you specifically mm-hmm. so I think that's a great way that you can kind of get more clients I actually had a client that um, I guess because we, we had we had a phone call and she like we like bonded because I was booking her appointment and she called the beauty bar and I was busy doing something else and she asked specifically for me and then she was talking with um, uh, somebody else at the time because I was busy and she refused to talk to them because it wasn't me. (laughs) So that's definitely strange because I'm not used to anything like that. I think it's normal. Like, Really? uh, Yeah, well, I mean, I don't frequent, like, beauty salons that much, to be honest, but I know, like, people have, like, their favorite hairdresser, yeah. and, you know, they won't go to anybody else, so I think that's pretty common, like, if people have a connection with you, like, a good connection, they're just not interested in giving their business to someone else, Yeah, and that's even better for you, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, it's great. Okay, so, Paige, how do you balance work with other aspects of your life? This is something I wish I had more of. Work-life balance. <laughs> well, I am so lucky that um, when I was applying here that I had the opportunity to do part-time. And I have, I work Tuesdays, Thursdays, Saturdays. So I always have a day off in between. So that definitely helps. And then I have, like, my day of winding down time. Mm-hmm. And... I usually just find myself doing laundry, which I don't know why, (laughs) or cleaning. I, personally, like, for work, I'm very clean, and I'm really specific about things. But for my room, yeah, that t-shirt can stay there for a little bit longer on the floor. I I don't know why that's, like, my go-to now that I'm working. I just need to always be cleaning. (laughs) So yeah, adulting. Mm, don't sucks. like it. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. Yeah. So, but you're pretty busy, right? Like you, you work at the beauty bar, I guess, mm-hmm. part time, right? And do you yes. work at another salon part time? I don't, um, because you're so busy here. I'm so right? busy. Like even when I'm not at work, I'm still getting messages, and and um, like if influencers are coming around, I have to make sure that what they're asking for is doable so sometimes I'll be at home and I'm like trying it out on myself and if it doesn't work I try it again and if it doesn't work then I'm like okay this one's just not possible right now hmm interesting yeah I just usually just cuddle with my dog (laughs) (laughs) okay so the reason I ask is I think a lot of our viewers they might be like new or just starting off and they might not really know exactly how much work goes into it because I don't know about like other companies but at Mm -hmm. LLBA you know um, even if you're working in the beauty bar there's a lot to mm-hmm. do that doesn't involve like the technical aspects like yeah. you're, you're 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 you know helping with social media yeah. a lot of the time and kind of managerial aspects of the mm-hmm. salon I'm sure you help help around with that as well too yeah. right so it's kind of gets busy right but yeah. you know so you say you're still kind of like getting used to yeah. it right managing work life balance it's not easy like and you're also kind of new as well. Oh, yeah. So I'm in my honeymoon phase right now. <laughs> honeymoon phase. Yeah. Oh, my God. Love it. Okay. So we talked a little bit about this, but maybe you can touch a little bit on um, customer experience. Like, how okay. do you provide really good customer experience, customer service to your clientele? So I double check, and it's just probably my anxiety. I double check about everything are you sure you want it this short are you sure you want this shape um if i'm on the last step before i I put any color on i'm like okay this is your last chance if you if you need to change anything otherwise when i put the polish on i'm gonna ruin that seal that i just created with the top coat so that's uh, smart. Yeah. That's very just, smart. Protect yourself. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's like, I'm not getting blamed for your... But you um, hardly ever get, like, anyone complaining. Oh, no. Or if they Everybody's do, it's, awesome. like, their fault. Yeah. You know, in a way. Yeah. <laughs> you like know? Because some people, later. they don't really know what they want. They say no. they want one thing, and then when they actually look at it on their hand, they're not happy. I know. They might try to blame you. Yeah. So how do you kind of navigate that? Like, some difficult customers or difficult clients 
might not be happy. So even though you asked them like three times. I know. <laughs> um, so I'll double check with them always ahead of time, even if I know what design or what color or what they want for their nails, I will get the picture and show them just like a hairstylist, right? If you're mm -hmm. somebody's going from one color to the next and you have a picture of brown and they have a picture of brown and you're like, okay, this is the brown that I'm thinking. Do you want another brown? And it ends up being blonde or something. Like, you just have to double check definitely mm -hmm. because everybody changes their mind all the time. Like, yes. you could think that they said one thing and then they'd come up to your appointment and be like, uh, no, actually, I want this instead. I was like, and you just be completely thrown off. Or what if you did start doing that design? Then you have to start all over again. Mm hmm. So. That's yeah. an interesting point, and I think you have to talk in layman's terms. Yeah. I think we know this firsthand yeah. with our experience in the beauty bar, mm -hmm. but you have to talk to people in layman's terms, because mm -hmm. what I understand as a manicure is not necessarily what you understand yeah. as a manicure. Yeah, no, they're <laughs> we, very We've different. been over this. Yeah. Yeah, some people think a manicure is like extensions, gel, but no. Mm -mm. So you kind of have to be very, very clear to yeah. avoid any misunderstanding, miscommunication. Mm -hmm. cause, so think, um, of, let's think, think of a manicure as just like a uh, cleanup, right? Um, also, going back to hair um, dressers, it's kind of like, like a haircut before you like style it and all of that, right? I'll give up all the fancy stuff. But yeah, going back to what you were saying before, about like connecting with your clients honestly just be yourself it's it's going to be so awkward if you're being tense and you and you don't know what to do like when i first started my hands would shake because i was so nervous of mm -hmm. of like it's like oh this is for real now so i'd have like my cuticle clippers and i'd be like this shaking and now i'm like Oh, you're a pro now, <laughs> literally. <laughs> so how do you know this is the right path for you? This is, don't think too deeply about this question. I'm only 19, <laughs> I don't know. Sorry, I didn't mean to get all existential <laughs> on you. But um, yeah, how do you know like that this is the right path for you? Maybe not forever, mm -hmm. but for the near future, how do you know this is right for you? I, you are in the honeymoon phase. I but am. Still, still. But because it's been like, you know, three years now of me, like, kind of pursuing this, um, I think it's going to stay because I change my mind a lot and I'm very indecisive. And if I didn't think that it was a good fit for me, I would have been over it a long time ago. So just the fact that I enjoy doing what I do, mm -hmm. like, I think that, that is so important. Like, And you're good at it. Yeah. Like, you enjoy it and you're good at it. Exactly. So. Like, you... It doesn't feel like work. It's fun, right? So it's nice to get paid for something that you enjoy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's a good way for like creative and artistic people to kind of get that outlet and like exactly. make a career out of yeah, because you know, um, being artistic, being in the art industry, uh, it's taken for granted so much because like a photograph or painting, somebody can see that as oh, that didn't take you that long. You just scribble some stuff or you just take a picture. But no, it's a lot more than that. And I mm -hmm. think that not everybody understands how technical it can be to be in that type of work. Mm -hmm. And you can, like, basically what I think is great about it is, like, you can monetize your talent in a way yeah. that you can't really in other mm -hmm. aspects of art, which could kind of be only a hobby yeah but like this it's like you can make turn your hobby into like your income exactly and then you never have to work exactly a day in your life exactly <laughs> if you love what you do it never feels like work so. well said Paige <laughs> all right so final question for you Paige um any advice for aspiring nail techs that you have um I would say that it's going to be hard at first like with everything that you do that's new to you but if you get the education it is so important nowhere is hiring without it anymore because if you don't have any proof of it then they're not gonna no matter even if you have pictures or you, you show them your work because you don't have the education or, or certification then you're kind of out of luck with that 
but I would also say like art school you have to build up a, po- a portfolio like I had like three years worth of, of nails on myself and of, on others and then I had the press on nails as like my, my proof mm-hmm. to show an employer that I was capable of doing it instead of just saying I can paint nails yeah definitely right yeah. so I think a lot of employers now they're looking for someone to also kind of be a part of their social media team exactly so photography skills are yeah. very undervalued in, yeah. in I think this industry because you take photographs of like every yeah. beautiful nail set that you do and we and we use them. Yeah, and like it's like I have to set up. You're and a I pro now. A <laughs> I wouldn't say that. <laughs> I'm still learning. <laughs> but yeah, you know ba- the basic elements mm-hmm. of like what constitutes like a beautiful nail picture, which yeah. like I wouldn't know. It um, it is it's it's a lot to once you get into it, it's a lot kind of thrown back in your face again. It feels like I'm in school all over again. But once you get the hang of it. Like, it's just, it's so easy, you'll find it. Just, everything goes so smoothly, right? So Okay, yeah. well said. Thank you so much, Paige, yeah. for <laughs> coming in to, to our studio. Oh my goodness, <laughs> you traffic walked, was horrible. Yes, you, you drove so far away <laughs> to come visit us. Thank yeah. you so much. We love having you. It was really fun. I hope you enjoyed as well. Oh, yeah. I had a and, blast. And, uh, yeah, thank you so much. I'm sure everyone watching and listening really enjoyed your tips and advice for nail tech. So thank you so much for sharing your journey. Yeah, no worries. And uh, if you are interested in uh, following us on social media, the links will be provided. We also have some of the best best lash and nail supplies. Yes, we have nail supplies too at LLBAProfessional.com. So uh, thank you so much for watching, and until next time, bye. bye! Okay, so Paige, final question for your page. Okay, wait, let me start again. <laughs> Too many pages. Trying to make it like sound natural. Sorry. Blah, blah, blah. One more time.